Hey guys, so we're moving on to question eight now. This is um, where we start getting into a bit more in-depth geometry. So let's look at the scenario that they've given us. It says in the diagram, P, Q, R, S is a cycliquad. So this purple one that I've outlined is a cycliquad. Importantly, we need to remember the properties of the cycliquad because that will come into our reasoning when we work out various angles, okay? It says chord R, S is produced to T, right? So basically it's saying this is extended to T. Q, I mean, sorry, K is a point on RS, right? And W is a point on the circle um, such that Q, R, K, W is a parallelogram. What's really nice is they've drawn that in for us, but they've also given us the parallel lines. They may not always give that to you. You should know those properties of a parallelogram. It's kind of in the name, parallela. Um, so it's parallel, okay? There's two sets of parallel lines. Then it says PS and QW intersect at U, okay? A point there and then it says PST, angle PST, um, which is PST, that one there, that equals 136 and then angle Q1 equals 100. Okay, so let's see now what they're wanting from us. So it says determine with reasons, right? They shouldn't even have to say with reasons, right? When you're doing geometry, you should know you should do it with reasons, right? You get a mark for the um, your answer and you get a mark for your reason. So it says here, the size of angle R. So we're talking about this angle here. Okay, so this is quite a nice one because we see that this, this line is parallel to this line. So if you remember your, um, some of your very early reasons that we learned in geometry in grade eight, these are co-interior, right? So angle Q1, right? So you can say here, Q1 plus R, equals 180 because of co-interior angles. Remember when you say co-interior angles, please, please, please remember to put your parallel lines, okay? So it's important because what we do here, right, is we sometimes forget to put in our parallel lines when we talk about co-interior, but the parallel lines are what enable the co-interior reason, right? So remember to put your parallel lines. You could um, say here instead of RT, you could say RK, um, S if you wanted to, right? But it's basically it's just saying that line there is parallel to that line there. That's just what I want you to um, indicate, right? So let's now move on to the next question, right? It says, what um, the size of P? So let's now go here. Let's just put in our angles here. So P, right, is the opposite angle to R in a cycliquad. You should be thinking, oh, of course, well, then P equals 100, right? So P equals 100, right, because of opposite angles in a cycliquad. So this is a property of a cycliquad, and you should know this, right? So a lot of what we're doing here is they're literally, literally just testing our very, very basic um, geom geometry and the understanding of the properties of the shapes that they've given us, okay? So we call this opposite angles in cycla. Quad. Okay, perfect. Let's now move on to the next question. So it says um, we want angle PQW. So where's PQW? PQW. Okay, I'm just going to just draw a little. Uh, so we basically want Q2. That's what this equals, right? So PQW is actually Q2. Okay, so what you should know, right, is because this purple is a cycliquad, we know that this angle here plus this angle here should equal 180, right? So because of opposite angles in a cycliquad. So we say S1 plus Q1 plus Q2 equals 180, right? And the, the reason there is opposite angles in cycliquad, okay? Now, we know that Q1 equals 100 degrees, and that's given, right? We know that S1 equals 180 minus 136, right? Because of angles on a straight line. This is a straight line, right? Angles on straight line, which means that S1 equals, if I'm not mistaken, 54. No, 44, 44, perfect, so it equals 44, okay, therefore we know that Q, uh, 
um, 2 equals 180 minus 100, right, minus 44. Therefore, Q2 equals 36 degrees. Okay. So that one is, I mean, there's numerous ways you can actually go about this. I'm just showing you one way. If you want an alternative way, you can go to the memo and check those. But I'm just showing you the, the, the reason that comes to me most obviously, right? And I'm hoping that it does the same for you. Because I think sometimes with these geometry questions, we look at them and we think they can only be solved in one way. And they can often be solved in many, many ways. Okay. Let's now go to the last question of 8.1. So we're looking for U2. So U2 is over here, okay? Now, what we know about U2, right, is we know that it, it's co-interior with S1, right? So we know that S1, we worked that out previously. We worked out that that was 44, right? So we know that U2 should equal 136, Okay, you could also say that um, U2 equals 136 because of alternate angles, because remember that's parallel to this, right? So there's lots of different ways you're going to do it. I'm going to I'm going to go for alternate angles just because it's one reason and it's a little bit quicker just to write. But you could do the angles on a straight line and then co-interior if you wanted to. But either way, it doesn't really matter, right? Because you get to the answer in the end. So I'm going to say U2 equals 136, um, which equals S2, right, because of alternate angles, right, but remember, we have to say our parallel lines, so our parallel lines are QW and RK, right, or you could go the whole way to RT, because remember, this is just an extension of that line, so you can say, um, sorry, what is this, QW is parallel to R T. Okay. So that is that question or well, 8.1. That question of 8.1 8 is done. Let's now move on to 8.2. Okay, which I think is going to be a little bit more difficult. Now, 8.2 says in the diagram, the diagonals of the quadrilateral C D E F intersect at T. So there's a point of intersection there. Okay. It says E F is 9 units, D C is 18. ET e, T is 7, and TC is 14. T, TC, sorry, TC is 10. FT is, is 5, and TD is 14. So you should, you should be thinking here, guys. You should be thinking, well, that kind of seems like all of the sides of this triangle are two times the size of that triangle. So you should be thinking, before we even get to the questions, you should be thinking, ah, I think maybe there'll be a question about similarity here because they've given me three sides, right? Which means that we can prove it via proportionality. But let's see what they ask us. Okay, they say, prove with reasons that EFD, so let's just draw this, EFD, so it's this guy here, EFD is equal to E. C, D. Okay, so we want this angle is equal to that angle. That's what we're trying to prove. Okay, that's what they're asking us to prove. Now, if we can prove that these two angles, right, I mean, these two triangles, they are proportional or they're similar because of proportionality, then we can say, well, because they're similar, we know all the angles are the same, right? Because remember in similarity, you have sides when it comes to proportions, you have sides that are different um, sizes, but the angles are all the same, okay? So let us prove that these two triangles are similar. So I'm going to use this one just because it's all in one, um, on one sheet, right? So we can say that um, in triangle EFT and triangle, so if we went EFT, we're going to go D, C, T, okay? And you could be saying, well, why does that matter? Well, I went here, right? I went 19, 5, 7. So here we want to go 18, 10, 14 because we want to make sure that it is in order, right? Because we're going to compare these two sides, these two sides, and these two sides, okay? So then we say, okay, well, E, F over C, D, equals 9 over 18, which equals a half. Okay, so we just proved that that's a half. Okay, then we're going to say, 
let's do uh, let's do we've done that one let's do f t over c t equals five over ten which equals a half okay then all we have left is t e over uh, what is the last one we have there? T, D. So that's 7 over 14, which equals a half. Okay. So now what we've done is we have proved similarity. So we say triangle EFT is similar. Oh, that's congruent. Sorry. Similarity is drawn like that. Remember, congruence is like that, but we're not doing congruency now. So triangle EFT is similar to triangle DCT. Right, and because it we say sides in triangles in proportion. Okay, so we just basically said all of them are in proportion of a half. Okay, and because they're in proportion, therefore angle EFD is equal to ECD. Okay, so we basically said this guy is related to that guy the same way that this guy is related to that guy and this guy is related to that guy. So we're saying these two things, these two triangles are similar because of proportionality. Because we're saying they're similar, that angle is equal to that angle. Okay, so this is quite an important thing to go through. If you're like, Margs, I don't understand what similarity and congruency is, please go over those notes again because it's very important so it often comes up and it's actually somewhere where you can score some quick marks. Okay. Let's now move on to the last question. So the last question says the angle DFC is equal to DEC. So let's use a little um, highlighter. So we're saying DFC, so DFC is um, equal to DEC. So we're basically saying that angle is equal to that angle. So What's important here, right, is we proved similarity, right? But also what we proved is it's actually um, angles in the same segment, right? So we proved if you know, you know where you have, um, it's of the same base, right? And you see if you go up there, it's equal. If you come down and it comes up there, it's equal. So actually what we've proved, and you might not even have realized this, we've proved that C, F, E, and D is actually a cycloquad, right? And because it's a cycloquad, it means that, the angles in the same segment can apply here as well. So if you go up here, that should equal that, right? So let's do this methodically so that you follow me. Okay, let me just go on to my next page here. Okay, so firstly, let's state what we proved in our previous question. So we proved that EFD, angle EFD, equals ECD. That's literally just what we proved, right? So because we proved that, we know that E, sorry, E, F, C, and D are concyclic. Basically what that means is they're a cycloquad, right? So we're saying they all lie, concyclic means they all lie on the circumference of a circle, right? Because of this fact that we proved here, okay? So there we say, then we say, therefore, um, E, F, C, D is a cycloquad. Okay, and the reason for the cycloquad is angles in same segment. Okay, because you can't have angles in the same segment equaling each other. You can't have that reason unless it's a cycloquad, right? A cycloquad enables that reason. So we're saying, okay, we get that reason. Therefore, it's a cycloquad. So we're working in the opposite direction of reasoning to the one we usually do, which is quite important. Okay, and because it's a cycloquad, right? Therefore... This angle, D, D, uh, F, C, so there, is equal to D, E, C, right? Because it's a cycloquad. So we say D, F, C, equal to D, E, C. And we say here, angles in same segment, right? Because now that we know it's a cycloquad, then it means that those angles equal each other. What's also interesting is you could say, well, then these two angles equal each other, right? Again, because of the nature of the cycloquad, okay? So it's very important to understand questions like this because often we're so used to being given a cycloquad and then doing angles in the same segment, but here we're given it the other way around, okay? 
So that's your final answer. That is this question done. Let's move on to question nine.